Hi, my name is Lewin Wild, and mostly this is a tutorial on how to paint your own drippy pride flag. And I made one for myself because, like, pride art that I see around looks great, but I don't often see a lot of like, uh, like organic, splattery, drippy, chaotic, arty stuff. Usually, it's quite like clean. There's a lot of vectors, so I wanted alternative for that because that's great it's not as much to my taste yeah and I thought I'd make a tutorial so you can do it too what am I saying my meds are wearing off um, and I filmed this tutorial back in May which was just before Pride March and I wanted to wear it for Pride March and keep watching to find out whether I did it in time and then later we went into lockdown and in lockdown I was like I'm gonna start a red bubble I want to make some queer things because of course I do and I realized I already had this flag so I've also with some Photoshop wizardry turned this design from the tutorial into like 78 or something other flags uh, yeah so option one you can follow along with the tutorial and make your own pride flag and you can also use one of the flags on Redbubble as a guide. Option two is that you can buy a flag from my Redbubble if you want to, if you're not so into painting, if you already have projects coming out your ears like me. Um, totally valid also thank you <laughs> especially if you want like a mug with a flag on it or something like I'm just gonna teach you how to paint canvas I don't know how to paint mugs but I'm sure if you put that into YouTube you could figure it out and option three is you can just hang out and watch me paint flags and it's kind of chatty so enjoy the entertainment if that's what you choose and also option four no uh, pressure to watch this video uh, everyone else, if you're still here, let's do it. Oh, that's important. You're totally welcome to just take what works for you, make your own version, but if you do want to copy it exactly, I'm totally fine with that if it's for yourself or if it's for a gift. But if you do want to sell a flag that you make, especially if it's prints, please change it a little bit. Like at least put the drips in a different position, maybe use a different shape, like something. Surprise me something different. Thank you, I would appreciate that. So, did I get it done by pride? Uh, you'll find out. On with the tutorial, I'll see you later. Uh, back patch take one. Intro. Alright, hello. I want to make you, well, I want to make me, actually, a back patch out of this for pride. It's pride march on Sunday and I'm hoping that maybe I can get it done before then. <laughs> Maybe today. I have this cheap little canvas from Officeworks. I live in so-called Australia. And first though, I want to acknowledge that I live on stolen land. This is Wurundjeri country in the lands of the Kulin Nation. And sovereignty was never ceded. I acknowledge elders past and present, and also pay my respects to any indigenous people watching this today. Uh, so this two cameras, fancy, uh, this is the design that I've got. I want to do something like this. This is the trans flag. I'm a transgender guy. And this is the omnisexuality flag, which is my favorite sexuality I look for myself at the moment. Pretty similar to bisexual or pansexual. I know that I can mean attraction to all genders. I just personally, also as a non-binary person, don't like that the etymology has two in it. Pansexual, usually the definition I see the most is attraction regardless of gender. And for me, I feel attracted to people of all genders, but the attraction feels different. Like the way that I'm into dudes feels different to the way that I'm into women, feels different to the way that I'm into binary people. Yeah, so <laughs> omnisexual is gender conscious attraction to all genders. And I'm into it, I think it describes me. And it fits the, uh, the colors fit well together. Homosexuality and transness, blues and purples and pinks. Also, I'm into this artist called Anya Brock. I am from. Oh, damn, I really should have looked up how to say that. Let's do it. 
Alright, I'm gonna say Bulu. <laughs> I grew up in Bulu on Bajakwaja, Bajaklan. And there's an artist who lives there who does a lot of a drippy sort of painting things and I've always thought it was cool. So yeah, I wanna do a drippy pride flag. Let's do it. As you can see, I've got my nice uh, board here. What you will need is a little canvas. This one's pre-stretched, which is handy for me. Some paint. I'll get into color mixing in a bit, but whatever colors you need. You don't have to do my design. Obviously, you can choose a different flag. Whatever one is right for you. I'm going to use some containers for mixing up the colors. Um, I got this idea from Onion Brock's Instagram. Uh, these are takeout containers that I've been saving up. Big brushes. And I also want something that I'm happy to get paint on because we're going to do drippy shit later and this artboard is nice and new so I don't want to cover it in shit just yet. First things first, uh, priming the shit out of this canvas because if we want like that drippy effect it's got to have a nice smooth surface to drip down instead of like meh, 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 meh. I give up. Oh, and water. That would also be useful. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some of that. You can also use like cheaper paint than usual. Yeah, this is acrylic. You can probably use fabric paint or whatever. It would be better. I don't know how long this is gonna last, by the way, but I'm trying it out. Handy dandy water. I'm a bit nervous if you can tell, but maybe you can't. Maybe I should just not say anything. Alright. Ideally, we do a few layers and let it dry. I forgot about letting things dry. That sucks. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe we'll not get this done today. But we're starting, and that's the main thing. Ah, probably it'd be good to have like a relaxed energy to this video. We don't need to get it all done today, Lewin. We can do it another time. If we don't have it by pride, that's okay. Probably other people aren't going to have time to do it by Pride and that's okay, but there are many other places that it is Pride in the world later, including where I am in a year. <laughs> or less, because it was pushed back due to COVID. I, I don't know if I said, but I um, I realised you could see all the random crap on my bed, so I tidied up a bit. And I realised that it's like autumn and I don't need a fan in here, so I'm going to put that away. It's currently on the floor. Can you see that? Can you? Oh, you can see the pile of crap. That's so annoying. <laughs> Damn it! I'm just gonna be like crap, rotating throughout this video. It'd be better to like do a thin layer and let it dry. But I am impatient. Ooh, this light is very bright. So it is the same day, but I have waited for the paint to dry and put it in front of the heater. So. That's good. And exercise, showered, stretched, and eaten dinner, and I'm proud of myself. <laughs> now we're up to mixing paint colors, and I've done the first three while waiting for the camera. So I'm doing each color in a separate container and getting mess all over myself, as I thought I would. What have we got left? So using my phone to check my plan. Yeah. So I've done the light pink, the darker pink, and the blue, and now we've just got the two purples and that really dark purple. So the three purples. As you probably know, but maybe you don't, you can make a purple by uh, combining red and blue. Uh, often it's like not very saturated, um, so I follow my dad's advice and buy a literal purple. So we have that, that's a good start. I reckon I'm gonna go for the bright mid-tone first. And it's a little, it's a fair bit below than this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some bright blue. And I'm making more than I think I'll need because I want it to be thick. I don't wanna like lose the color and I want it to be drippy. So, oh no, wait, not pink. We want 
glue just a bit and I reckon a little bit of white you know maybe I should charge the battery on my camera because I'm not doing much there it lies to me it says it's fine but all right painting I have a plan oh wait not painting first I'm gonna draw a heart on sounds like a heart on doesn't it or maybe I should paint it actually because the pencil might come up later and I don't want it to. In blue, that makes sense for my plan. Uh, oh, water. Whoops, I forgot. My very clean water jar. It's not enough task space. Oh god, don't fall off. Part time. If I was doing this properly, I would have primed this more, but. I actually love the heart shape that I have here, so. I'm happy that I'm actually doing this. I have had this plan in mind for so long. And then it being pride, I was like, fuck it, let's actually do it. That heart looks all right. Maybe a little bit lower. Just gonna tidy it up with some white. I just, handling paint, I have the feeling it's gonna be harder than I hoped to get the style that I'm going for, but. <laughs> We shall see. Oh yeah, and figuring out the lines might be good. I'm not gonna do them super straight exact because can't be bothered and don't really care. Um, I'm gonna measure it. <laughs> I don't like how it's like bigger down the bottom than the top. 5.8 centimeters up there and Park mats, 23. They're about the same, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, point eight. 11 centimeters divided by three. 3.6 reoccurring. 3.7. 3.9. Oh, let's make that a little bit lower. 3.7. How shall we do this? I don't really want to get paint on my ruler, but it is easy to wash. Okay, I'm gonna go clean this before it dries. So we're gonna start with the light blue at the bottom. Where's my plan? Yay, I haven't done this in so long. I might just do like all of the stripes and then the drips. Wow. That was fast. I'm gonna do this because I've got this color on my brush and I don't wanna waste more paint. So I think this flat, big brush is perfect for this. It covers a lot of area quickly. I'm not gonna do the sides because I'm probably just gonna chop them off. Great. That happened really quickly and I am keeping the paint pretty thick. I'll probably water it down a little bit when I try to make the drips later. Okay, let's do pink. I'm gonna wash that brush. Wow, it's such a, it's like almost the size of the stripe. Pink looks a little bit dark. Pretty similar. <laughs> oh well. Painty hands. Painty phone. Uh, pink at the top. I think we need a smaller brush. I know that um, sometimes there's like Heart to be a romantic orientation and sexuality on the outside, um, and this is the I'm trans, like sexuality and romantic attraction on the inside. But I guess also likes like that. Anyway, I like it. But um, I want to do just like a ah, uh, what was it? What's the state? I forget. But with the rainbow and brown and black stripes and I thought of that more as like something I just wear out and about to be like I'm here and I'm queer if I want to because like 
most people are not gonna know the trans flag, let alone the um, omnisexual flag. Good enough! Um, but this flag is something that I am I'm looking forward to wearing at the parade. Which looks like I'll get done! Okay, light purple. This looks quite dark, but I'll slide that up. like the colour on my phone. But it's cute. Am I happy with that colour? I guess it's never gonna look like it does on the screen. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Alright, oh, and then let's add a bit of this purple to a lot of white. That's the last place we'll do. Oh, don't get any please. Yes. smart to use separate brushes if you can be bothered. I cannot. <laughs> well, I did want it lighter. <laughs> Difficult to get it tight on all the edges. That'll do. And now for the... <laughs> Lost without my phone. The dark bit. As you can see, there's been a bit of a change of plan. I hope you can stop hearing me. Where should we put the mic? I don't want to put it near the paint. What if I... seriously put it there? ASMR! So, my other camera's battery is dying, but the Osmo Pocket is still going strong. So we're gonna do this. Me painting one. <laughs> Okay, now to make it look neat with an outline. Is this brush too big? Nah. <laughs> so I want to make it look like kind of neat and structural before I mess it up with drips. I want that like contrast. That's a line. Oh yeah, I was thinking of maybe making this bit darker so you can actually see the tip of the heart better. It would be so much easier if the rest of the paint was dry. But alas, <laughs> I'm partly soldiering on because um, I don't want this to dry. It's pretty good. I'm okay with it. Some dark blue. Just gonna do that on one side. See the V more, but I don't want to change the whole color. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Let's add some at the top too to make it make a little more sense. That was too much. <laughs> Just want it to have the same kind of texture. Nice. Neat ish. Oh. Neat ish. And we're back. Um, for drips, the most exciting and the riskiest part of this whole thing. <laughs> so I don't know if it's gonna work, honestly. I'm not just saying that for the tension. And it's my favorite part. So let's. Give it a go. We can always paint over it. It's not like it's watercolor. So, same colors, bit more water, lots of paint. Start at the bottom. Let's do this. If I make it too runny, that would be really annoying because then I'll have to mix the right color again. Okay, here goes nothing. I hope this doesn't, um, what's the word, like, crack off. It's a lot more likely to do so. With, like, thick, protruding pieces of paint. So I think that is not the right consistency. <laughs> that is a blob of paint. 
that is not a drip. <laughs> Let's get some water. Okay. <laughs> That's more of a drip. What if I use this guy? That is not great. <laughs> Again. And you Brock, how do you do it? Sticky fingers, not a fan. Take two. <laughs> Alright, more water. That looks better. Yes, drip my pretty. Very fucking slowly. <laughs> Alright. Let's try one over here. That looks better. Yeah. Still very thick, but I'm okay with it. Alright, so we've got it like this consistency. I don't know how well you can see it, up, but I still want these to be recognizable as stripes. <sighs> that does not look great, but let's keep at it. If I don't just ruin this whole thing. <laughs> that looks okay. Okay, okay. No light. I'm gonna use a smaller brush because those drips are thick. So now we are going like up through the layers. <laughs> so that they can combine Add to that epic huge drip in white. Go forth and prosper, my sweet little drip. Go forth! Yes! I hope people can still tell what flags they are. Cool, so this is what we've done today, which is pretty much it. I will see how I feel about it in the morning, see how it dries, see if it cracks, and then I'll take it off the frame and make it into a back patch. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks cool. I think it looks like my like leading lefty heart emo fantasy. I'm down with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that my teenage self would also have been if a little bit surprised at what the flag means. <laughs> Your worst fears were right and it's fine. <laughs> I'll see you back here when I am cutting things out. Good night. Hey, is everything recording? Hello, it is two days later and I'm pretty happy with this. Ah. Uh -huh. I just had a look at this and I think it's going to be harder than I thought I'm trying to get the staples out of here. So the two tools that I have are a fork that I don't particularly care about that's kind of sturdy and some pliers. So we're going to see how we go. Let's start somewhere easier. That is not getting out of that. Okay, 
Don't try this at home, but it's a tutorial. <laughs> Maybe this was not such a good plan. Or could I use it's less dangerous? <laughs> Leave suggestions down in the comments. What about this like circle drawer thing? Nope. What about... Oh yeah, palette knife. nib I don't particularly care about. I don't think this is gonna work, but let's try it. Nope. Ben. Oh, what about this multi-tool my boss bought me ages ago, my old boss. Shout out to This feels dangerous. What's thin and strong and... Let's just Google it. How remove staples from wood. Knives and screwdrivers. Pocket knives. Well, a hook blade staple remover. I mean, that sounds handy, but I don't want to buy that and probably neither do you. <laughs> Bunnings, $6. That's good. It's like a hardware store, if you're not familiar. They sell one at Maya for $34. <laughs> All right, well, let's try a knife again. And if not, I'll buy one. Yes. Hey, how is my painting going? Fine. Jeez. All right, so this method does work with my <laughs> flick knife and pliers, but I don't think it needs to be a flick knife, but I might actually buy the staple remover just because, like, I want to show a safer option if you <laughs> or your child who's been listening to me swear don't want to risk using a knife. Because I think that's totally valid. <laughs> and it's only $6.25. I'm on Centrelink, but I can afford it. So I'll see you later. Hey, okay, hello. So... It's a bit late, but Pride March is tomorrow and I've come this far. So I bought this uh, staple removing tool as another option. Let's see how little Birdie does. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh geez. It doesn't seem to be damaging the painting, but I am pressing pretty hard. Maybe if I use my hand like this. I think this is harder than the knife, honestly. But actually getting it out once I get underneath, I think is easier. Yay. It's free. Yes. <laughs> and now I am just gonna cut it along the fold line, try and make it as straight as possible, and maybe I'll fix it up later, but I want to go to bed. Hello, it's me. It's December me again. <laughs> How's it going? Um, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, you have no idea. Do I? What's my, what did my notes say? I'll show you some footage from Pride March in a sec, but let's finish the tutorial first. I didn't quite finish the tutorial off in May, so here's December me to show you... What did I do? Ironing. I heat set the Pride flag, yes, in hopes that it will last a bit longer. I don't know, I read it on the internet. So here's me heat setting the Pride flag. This is my first time doing it, so I was a bit nervous.
So I'm just attaching with safety pins. I think it looks cool and punk and it's easy and it can come off as well. I wear a lot of backpacks and I don't really fancy wearing this under backpack so I can you know, take it off if I want to wear a backpack, put it on if I am just going pocketsy. If you look closely, the footage you're about to see is on a different denim jacket. Um, I have two, I didn't realize. Oh well. All right, and without further ado, here is Pride March with me, Marching with the Shed, who are a transmasculine peer support group based in Nam or Melbourne, uh, who I love and I help run. This is what I'd wear for just like a casual day where I feel like being like, yes, I'm all the things. This is pretty much my pride look that you've seen already, but now you get to see me dance around and look happy because I heckin' love my chest. And this is for it's legitimately cold outside. You can also dress like this on your way to the event and then become much more scandalously clad at the actual event, like my previous outfit. <sighs> okay, you've made it. I've made it. This is the end of the video. This is the outro. And I'm genuinely curious how many people made it this far because I don't know how long this is going to be, but probably a bit too long. So comment a umbrella emoji down below. Um, if you made it this far, umbrella for like trans umbrella, queer umbrella, not gonna rain on our pride parades umbrella. And because I am an artist trying to get paid to make art, I'm gonna remind you that I have a lot of flags on Redbubble and Redbubble can be a bit confusing. So real quick, let's pretend that I, a non-binary, omnisexual slash bisexual trans guy, that I'm in a relationship with a trans man and I wanna get him something for midsummer slash yule slash christmas his birthday something it could be an anniversary present i suggest using the collections that i've got in my store that will make it easier there's a lot of flags i could go to trans i could even go to gay mans or i could go to buy um have a look through maybe we're both twinks could get the twink one let's say we're polyamorous uh trans and polyamorous um, gay and polyamorous because it's a gay relationship. That's a really nice one. I like that one. Let's say T for T. That one's cute. It's unique. I like it. And I then go to see more items like available on like 56 other items. Click on that and then see what you would like to get. So let's say t-shirt. Hmm. Um, matching mugs. T for T mugs. I think that's real cute. I think he'll think it's cute. He's a fictional character, but you know. Also, like you could get things for a community group. Say you're in a like bi plus community group and you want a big flag or you want matching t-shirts for pride or whatever. You can get that too. There's A stuff. There's queer platonic relationship stuff. There's polyamorous stuff. There's gay stuff. There's lesbian stuff. Basically, if you have any connection to the LGBT community, there's probably at least one, probably like six flags relevant to that. Unless the main thing is being intersex. Sorry, I didn't know how to integrate that into this particular design, but in the future. And if you do follow the tutorial, I would love to see you. Please tag me on whatever social media, Lewin underscore wild usually. Also, if you buy something from Redbubble, I'd love to see a photo, especially if you're cool with me using it for promotion for myself. Bonus points if it's PG, but really gay. <laughs>
That would be wonderful. Um, awesome. Like, comment, subscribe. All the YouTube things might help. Who knows? Bye. I hope you're having a good time. And thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.